Hello? This is the doctor speaking. How may I help you? Welcome to About Time, a Doctor Who podcast. I'm Stephen, and I've been a Doctor Who fan since 2005. And I'm Ben, and I've never seen the show before. For years now, I've been trying to convince Ben to give it a go. And my answer has always been no. But now, finally, he's agreed not only to watch it with me, but to do a podcast about it as well. And quite frankly, it's It's about about time. time. Are you my Benny? Go away. <laughs> you mustn't let him touch you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello, we're back. We're back. We've just watched The Empty Child. Episode nine. Yes. Um, so Ben's just seen his first ever Stephen Moffat penned episode of Doctor Who. Um, and uh, the vibes I'm getting are quite positive. <laughs> quite positive, actually. Okay. Yeah. I have my issues, but yeah, I have... Yeah, you, you um, always have your issues, but you liked it. Overall, yes. What What did you like about it? Nancy. Nancy was... Yeah, Nancy is good. Nancy is by far one of my favourite side characters I've come across out of the whole series. Yeah. Do you prefer she's, her to Gwyneth? Yes. Oh, you do? Over okay. her, yeah. She's honest. She's... Like, I have a soft spot for evacuee stories. Yeah, you do. Historical you do. novels. <laughs> And Nancy is such a strong character, like this mother figure, this child mother figure. And she portrays her really well. Mm. And like, I felt for her. Yeah. I felt for her. And that's what I love about a a good actress is when you feel for her. Like, and even if that's a positive or a negative emotion, I think that's a really great trait of an actress. Absolutely. Yeah. Or yeah. Any, any actor or actress, like making you feel an emotion, that's them doing their job properly. Yeah. 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 100%. And Nancy really quite made the episode for me mm. she made me feel for her and yeah. I, I just i just she is the actress is very good and i don't think she acts anymore oh which is a shame isn't it yeah she i don't think she's done much no but she's she shines in this episode doesn't she, she does really yeah. shine in this episode and i i have the question about doctor who okay this might give spoilers away or something like does the okay. doctor always pick people from modern day well, if you think about it, like, Rose is not from the modern day from the Doctor's point of view. Rose but is from the past. From our point of view. So are you saying, do the writers always make it a modern day person? Yes. Um, in the new series, since 2005, pretty much yes. Ugh, I'm boring. In the classic series, there was a bit more variety. Like, I was thinking to myself, like, Nancy. Oh, would be she, yeah, that would be fantastic. A lovely companion. Yeah, Gwyneth would have been a nice companion if she did. Gwyneth would have been a survived, lovely companion. Yeah. Um, yeah, like these strong, like what I think Russell's really good in, what he's doing really well in this series for me is strong female characters. Mm. I We haven't come across a character, well, apart from Bimbo Mum. Jackie. Um, <laughs> Even Jackie Strong, like even the last episode, she was a strong female. Yeah, exactly. Um, And I really, I am all about strong female characters. Absolutely, yeah. Like, because like when I I write, nothing's published and I do it for my fun. Yeah. But all my characters, I try to have a strong female representation because like Mm -hmm. I have, my mum is a strong backbone woman. Mm-hmm. And she's my inspiration for some of those characters. Mm. Um, and I just think it's really important. We need it positive is, role is. models for young women and young girls. And we're only going to break, we're only going to break the suppression if we teach these, teach the young girls, you can be anything you want to be. And yeah. You break need to be this, a damsel in distress. Yeah, and and yeah. break this gender inequality. Mm. We need to break that down. And that comes to us by writing it in good media, writing it in TV shows, Absolutely. films, books, even adverts. Like, yeah. we need it everywhere. Yeah, it's Sorry, the same. With... Soapbox. No, no, you're absolutely right. <laughs> it's the same with all forms of prejudice and injustice. Like, you make the change happen by by making it happen. Yeah. Right? Representation. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Um, it's funny you mention um, that you like the strong female characters you've seen and you include Nancy in that and you mentioned that russell's really good at that yeah oh, but of course this episode was Stephen moffat and 
uh, you know, I told you Russell rewrites all the episodes, all the yeah. scripts. The one exception to that is Stephen Moffat. I remember reading somewhere out of like professional respect because of the level of um, career that Stephen Moffat was at. Mm. Um, Russell just left Stephen to do his own things. And personally, I think Nancy's probably one of Moffat's best female written characters. Um, because I will say, as he goes on further in, in his career, further in Doctor Who... Don't spoil it. I'm not saying anything. I'm not spoiling anything. I'm just saying I wouldn't say female characters are particularly his strength. Okay. I think Moffat's idea of a female, a strong female character is a woman who can be sassy and, you know, which is not what being strong is about. No. no. Yeah, so, you know. Okay. Okay, we'll have but to let's say, come to that. It doesn't take away from the fact that Nancy is a fantastic character. Yeah. Played by a fantastic actress. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So you've talked about um, something you really liked. What was something you didn't like about this episode? Um, John Barrowman's character. Yeah. <laughs> Captain Jack. Didn't like him one bit. Okay. I think you're not supposed to like him in this first episode. I guess he's a villain. He's a bit of a, he's a, bit of a, wet, a wet weekend villain, yeah. Yeah. And also, like, also, we all know I have a problem with the CGI mm -hmm. thing coming out of his fucking mouth. Oh, the when Richard Wilson turned into yeah. a Zappa gas mask person. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it would I, I don't understand what they were trying to do, like this like gore like almost like horror y kind it of is, thing. It is, it is gory. Like, yeah. The thing that I think Doctor Who is like really struggling for me is it's like doing things like they've got these creative ideas, but their technology doesn't match them. Mm. They need to do what they can do yeah. well. Yeah. Rather than But I would argue that strength. they were they were learning in this first series what they could do and what they couldn't. Yeah. Still don't like it. But this is the no. paid TV show. Like, I, know, is, I know, I know, I know. This is like, we're watching this. We pay a TV license to watch this. Yeah. Come on, BBC. Like, you have... Yeah. Let's just say when I was um, 13, because I would have turned 13 by now, watching this for the first time, it wouldn't have bothered me. I wouldn't have noticed anything wrong with yeah. it. Yeah, but... And I doubt you would at 13. Yeah. I doubt you would have sat there at 13 and gone, oh, that CGI is really bad. Come on, BBC. Would you? I'm quite critical. Or maybe you were like that at 13. <laughs> I've always been critical. Yeah. I was told in my art lessons that I have a really good... Critical eye. Critical eye. Yeah. Like, and I use really good critical language. Yeah. Like, I went up to... Um, there was this boy, we didn't really get on, and he was painting these professor roles. Why he was painting professor roles, I do not know. He was painting professor roles, and the teacher was like... He was asking the teacher, like... Oh, what would I get for this? Like, what grade would you give this? And the teacher was like, okay, I can't really give it a grade, grade, but like, if I'm going to grade it at anything, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it a D. He was like, and the, the boy was like, why? I've worked really hard on this. He said like, and I said, I, and I piped up, it's not <laughs> clarified enough. You've not clarified your lights and shadows. You need to push the deep shadows in. You need to bring up your highlights. Oh. And the teacher looked at me and said, that's exactly why. Okay. What style was he going for? Because, I mean... Realism. Oh, if that's the case, that's fair enough. Because, he was going for yeah. realistic. And, like, my my art style is not realism. I do respect anybody who does realism art. But for me, my personal opinion and my personal take on it, we have cameras. Yeah. I don't understand why there's a need to, to replicate become the... a camera. Yeah, that, yeah. It feels like... Don't get me wrong. They have, like, mastered colour. And they've mastered. Yeah, it's an, all this. it's an incredible skill. It's a skill, and it's and it's thing, and you can make all these great compositions and paint them and all this. But a lot of people will take a photo to paint a photo to copy it, like, yeah, to reference, yeah, like that. I just don't understand that. And if you're yeah. a realistic artist and you want to explain your process and why you love to do it, and get in contact, yeah, like. But this is the Doctor Who co podcast, Ben. No, so but let's, but let's not. You know, it would be interesting. I think I'm sure you'd be interested to hear from anyone who had a viewpoint on that. Yeah, like like I'm I'm really interested in like my my interests are art and my I sew books. and books and yeah. reading and writing and all that. RuPaul's so, Drag Race. RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> uh, I do actually want to watch the new season this year. but what, The American um, one. Yeah, but Ugh. like, I'm not paying WoW Presents. I'm sorry, WoW Presents. Like, no. Let's sashay away from that topic. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> We've gone on a tange. Um, can I just circle back to um, the first thing you said you didn't like was Captain Jack. Oh, yeah. Oh. So should we talk about him? Um, obviously, you know, spoilers, but you, you know that he becomes a big part of the, the Hooniverse. That actual character. Yes. 
Oh. He's so Ben turned to me during this episode, the bit when he and Rose are on top of the spaceship drinking champagne. Mm. Um, and Ben said to me, is he this insufferable in Torchwood? <laughs> um, and my answer to that is um, he's always a little bit insufferable because John Barrowman is to a lot of people. But he's not he's not nowhere near as bad as this. He and the talk, thing about Torchwood is it's an ensemble cast. He is only one. He's, yeah. It's not like the Doctor. I really, I really don't like this slimy character. This no. slimy cockroach of a character. I feel oh. like I, I, I feel like he he develops um, as it goes along. Ugh. He's just a slimy toad. He has a let's put it this way. He has a place to be redeemed from at the moment. He's he's a real toe rag. Um, I don't want to spoil anything because I'm not sure if he, they said it in this episode or if it's not coming yet. But why does he have a time machine? Who? This fucking Jack someone. Jack Harkness. Yeah. Is he a time agent? He said he was a time agent. Oh, but so, I... so he comes from the future. Yeah. How, when? Where? What? Is he American? Well, like, I, I don't know how much of this to answer because a there's a lot we don't know. He's there's a lot of mystery in his back in his past. In his backstory. Okay. But also, I'm pretty sure they said it, he said in this episode that he used to work for the time agency and then... I can't remember, so don't. I can't remember. Okay. Or not, so okay. Um, so I want to ask you it's one... De- it's definitely in this two part. so if they don't see it in the next episode, I'll discuss it in our okay. next episode. There is one thing I want to ask. Yeah. Is he American? Uh, or is he putting on an American accent? Oh, what, John Barrowman? Or the, the, the character? I know John Barrowman is English. Well, no, John Barrowman technically was born in Scotland, I think. Yeah. He's Scottish, but he he speaks with an American accent in real life. It's difficult to explain. I think he basically... Because you know, like, a lot of actors retrain themselves in their accent. Yeah. Like Anne Robinson, for example, I think came from Liverpool. And she she trained herself to speak with RP for her career. His accent... Is it's, that how he speaks? Yeah. Is that his normal accent? Yes. Oh, oh my God. No way. Grating. It sounds like the baddest accent I've ever heard. It just, every time he spoke, it was like nails on chalkboard. Are you saying you think it sounds fake? Yeah. I thought he put it on. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I really thought, he's putting an accent on. Like, just speak normally, mate. But yeah, that is literally how he speaks. Oh my I God. mean, I won't, we're not going to dwell on this, but, you know, we've talked before about how he's got problematic um, behaviour in his past. Yes. Um, while he was on the set of Doctor Who and Torchwood. Yes. Um, you know, we're not going to spend ages talking about that because it's been talked about to death. But, um, yeah, he's there, he's just something about him that I find cringy yeah. anyway. Like, okay. he, he posted a video on Instagram recently, which I suspect was linked to the fact that Big Finish are bringing Torchwood back without him. Mm-hmm. And he basically, this video was like, I have had some really bad news. I can't talk about it yet, but when I do, blah, 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 you know, and it was like. Oh. <laughs> get over yourself, mate. Um, like, honestly, get over yourself. Yeah. Okay. Um, do, you th- do you think he was attracted to Rose or do you think he was, it was all part of his con? Con? Is yeah. he gay? He's pansexual, omnisexual. Oh. So I think... Personally, I think he probably is attracted to Rose, but he's also using it to his advantage. Yeah. Okay. Um, his spaceship, though, yeah, reminds me of the inside of a ta- uh, inside of a Dalek. Really? That's how I imagine the Dalek would look, like all like squiggly wiggly. All biggly. the wires, like loose wires everywhere. Yeah, all the like loose wires and the, okay, the copper and the yeah, yeah. It's a funny little set that little spaceship. Yeah. <laughs> I rolled my eyes when we were when when I when I when I knew it was going to go to back to London. I was like, "Back to London." Yeah. Ugh. But when I, when it was like 1941, I was like, "Okay, I can." At least this. it's not modern day. Yeah. Yeah. I like I like historical stuff, so that was. Good. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, to be honest, I think they do quite a good job of recreating World War Two in this. Um, yeah, episode. it was good. Like the Blitz, you know, when Rose is hanging from the barrage balloon. Yeah. Oh, that's all right. It's still I, it's still a bit. Clunky. I think that looks really good for 2005 TV. Yeah, they spent all the budget on that. Barrage, you know, the, the Blitz. Mm. Um, yeah, but all the costumes and the, the sets and things, like I think it's quite believable. Um, it's a very dark episode, like literally. like Tonal. Well, yeah, tonally, but also literally. Like, I think this two-parter is probably the only two episodes in the season 
where there's not a single daylight scene. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the beginning, um, when they were chasing the thing. Ugh. What? What was wrong with that? It's like, ugh. A bit boring opening, isn't it? Boring? Yeah. But they're tracking Move! Something. It's move! It means emergencies! Oh, anything to be fucking different. I know. That's what I was going to bring up with Move Alert. That, that right there is a Moffatism. That is Moffat thinking, oh, yes, wouldn't it be funny if... Because he's Scottish. <laughs> like, oh, wouldn't it be funny if humans were the only one that were different and made it red alert and that's so funny and camp. Like, yeah. But that never comes up again. Out of Who. all the fucking colours you chose mauve. That, I think that's supposed to be funny. It's not, though, Moffat. It's not. Okay, you heard it here uh, probably for the millionth time. Not funny. It's not funny. <laughs> Do you know why it's not funny? Because you chose, a, you tr- tried to force this funny colour into a f- serious situation yeah. and it didn't deliver very well. Yeah. I'm sorry, Moffat. Get a grip. That is where, do you remember where I was, say, I was telling you, I think it was last week or maybe yeah. the week before, about Moffat's sitcom background? Yeah. He sees everything as an opportunity for a joke. There's a time and place in this show. Yeah. Like the beginning of an episode, no, I don't. I don't like. I I appreciate we're trying. He's like jumping straight into the action. I appreciate that. Yes, that's really much like my taste. Yes, of things, and I really appreciate it. Um, can the doctor please get a driving lesson of this fucking TARDIS? Have you passed your test? Have you You've got a provisional doctor? Why? What, what's what's wrong? You can't land it properly. Like, it's all, like, sparks here and flashes there. It's just like, come on, Doctor, you're supposed to be a Time Lord and driving a TARDIS is a part of a title. Yeah, but it's meant to be operated by six people, and he's just one. Get six companions, then, and train them! And also, with that, tracking that thing, he said he'd, like, uh, like slave the TARDIS to it, so he wasn't even controlling it. It was, like, wherever that went, the TARDIS would follow. Yeah. So, yeah, it was not really his fault. We didn't really do a good job, did it, though? Because the object landed month. elsewhere and he it landed month, somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, but it did the best it could. It did the best it could. <laughs> One of my favourite little bits in this episode is um, when the TARDIS phone rings and yeah. it's the Doctor's like, how can you be ringing? It's not even a real phone. It's not connected. And then, like, when he's speaking on it and he's like, who is this? How did you ring here and stuff? I, I always imagine um, that would be quite funny, edited together with Bart Simpson. Oh. Doing one of his like mo prank yeah. calls. <laughs> yeah. Go on, there's a, there's a, there's a I think it's probably you. been done a million times. Stephen's going to do a new TikTok video with that. No, it's probably been done, and then I'll get accused of just ripping someone off. Oh, okay. um, talking about Moffat's writing, another thing he, for me, like a signature thing he does is um, he writes in jokes based on actors' appearances. Did you notice that in this episode? No. So when Nancy was saying about, is that why your nose is so big? Oh. And have your ears got special powers too? Yeah, like it's not necessary. No, it was not. <laughs> the humor would be fine if it landed well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it doesn't land very well. Yeah, the thing about Moffat's jokes, a lot of them are sexually based. Oh. I don't know if we've had any of that in this episode that I can think of. No. Maybe with the flirting with Jack and Rose bit, but that was needless. I yeah, mean. it's yet another. Potential love interest for Rose. Yeah. How many do you want in this season? Yeah. For me, for me, you could cut Jack out of it and the episode could feel better. Yeah. They needed to introduce him though. Because they wanted to write Torchwood. Yes. Who who writes Torchwood? Um, Who showed runs it? Russell created it, but then Chris Chibnall show ran it. Oh, okay. What did you think about Nancy's like... Um, where she goes into houses and like feeds the children. I was like, "You thieving bitch!" <laughs> yeah. I know you're hungry. Yeah, I know you're hungry, but they're fucking hungry as well. Yeah, but that that family that's there's only we saw like a couple and a child, didn't we? Yeah, and they had a lot of food on their table. Yeah, um, and if she would have probably only go to what the same house once, like she wouldn't repeat yeah i think it's fair enough but you know what the doctor said about it's brilliant i don't know if it's marxism in action or a west end musical Mm. i always love that don't you think that actually would make a good musical like children uh who are living rough and they go in you know they've got this little group we are the street rats of london 
We will feed off your food in the cupboards. We are the street rats of London. We are the street rats of London. Okay. Feed us crumbs. Feed us bits. Feed us awful from the tits. From the what? Tits. Tits? I don't know. Things that rhyme. Okay. Coming soon. We are the street rats of London. (laughs) This is what I have to put up with. This is what being in a relationship with Ben is like. (laughs) Random songs just... Out of the blue. Yeah. Um, but what would you... We are the street rats of London. I'm going to... Ha- that's going to be a musical. What would you call it? Street, street rats. rats. Okay. What, what you could also have a number that's Nancy, like, is this the right thing that I'm doing? Yeah. And also, like, maybe, maybe like, one of the children get ill. Yeah. And she's got to, like, find medicine for them. And then yeah. she's, like, she, she, like, coerces and, like, flirts with, like, a rich man. Yeah. Like, a rich boy. And she's, like... Can you give me money for the medicine for my friend and brother? Can you give me medicine? Can you give me medicine? Would Jamie be in it? Jamie, Jamie, Jamie's dying. (laughs) Jamie, Jamie, Jamie's dying. Jamie, why are you dying? Don't leave me alone, Jamie. I need you here with me. That bit was good. Don't leave me alone, Jamie. <laughs> Stay here with me. I've messed up. Everybody's too talking about Jamie. Everybody's talking about Jamie because <laughs> he's dying in the streets. Okay. Wet and rainy, it is all the things that you see. Half an hour later. Um, Street rats of London. You're so babies. <laughs> Every time I open my mouth to speak, he starts singing again. Yeah, no. You had um, another cri- complaint about the um, sonic screwdriver again. Oh! Magic, 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 magic. Fucking hate magic. If I wanted magic, I'd watch Harry Potter. Yeah, it did make me... When you, you know when he he used it to open the padlock to get into the hospital um, and you just went, magic, and I couldn't help it. I just looked at him and was like, Alohomora. If it's a tool that the doctor uses, mm-hmm. we should know how it works because he understands how it works. If he, If they can't explain how it works, it's magic. But in what context in an episode are they ever going to have the Doctor be like, oh, well, it works like this, and then... A padlock from 1941 does not have a microchip. How can how can a light unlock a mechanical padlock that has no electricity or power powering it? It's sonic. It's... Remember, it was invented as a screwdriver. Screwdri- screws don't have microchips. Explain to me how a, it, it sonically unscrews a screw. Because it uses sound waves to push the object or manipulate the object. So you're saying it uses sound waves to move the locks inside? I believe that's the, the idea, dial. yes. You're not impressed. I'm not impressed <laughs> because it comes across as magic. Yeah. Please refer to episode two when I call it the eight inches of steel. Yeah. Um. Did you like the cameo from Richard Wilson? I was like, Victor Meldrew's here. Yeah. Did you see him and were like, I don't believe it. If you're American. Yes. Victor Meldrew is from a sitcom. Called One Foot in the Grave. One Foot in the Grave. Um, you're not missing much. I like it. I like it. It's, My brother it's, loves it It's as very well. off the wall. It's It's very sort of weird and like... Weird Do you like, like Faulty Towers as well? Oh, Faulty Towers is classic. I fucking hate Faulty Towers. Okay. Slapstick and weird funniness yeah. is not my But jam. One Foot in the Grave isn't slapstick. It's it's basically a man who complains about everything, an old man, and I think he's really good in this. Richard Wilson. You think yeah. he's amazing in this? No, amazing. I think he's good. I just, his his delivery um is always one of those that just lives rent free in my head. Like, I've always found his way of speaking quite interesting. Because he, I think he's Scottish, but he he tries to dull down his accent a bit, and he's just like, what is it? There's one line he says. He's like, they're harmless. They just sort of sit there. And when he's like, physical injuries as plague. Um, but he's really creepy. In yeah. This. What's the? Oh, once he starts transforming, and he's like, you need to find Nancy again. She knows more than she's saying. She won't tell me, but she... Mommy. It's so yeah. creepy. And she might not be there. She might be an empty one. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah, because the Jamie. Jamie, the little fucking shit. <laughs> little fucking shit, Jamie. Jamie needs to fuck <laughs> off and get away from my girl, Nancy, oh. because... You were saying that and it, when he was coming in and she was yeah, hiding get on the away table. From her. You were like, don't kill my favourite character. Yeah, do not kill my favourite character. Um, now, I'm going to be careful with this question because basically whatever you say, I'm not going to respond pretty much. Okay. But um, have you got any theories about what will happen in part two or what's going on? Um, so my some of my theories are that... Um, there is an alien inside Jamie that can't live. Um, the, it's a Tula. Mm-hmm. There was a Tula left inside. This Jack was paid by the Tulas to deliver this on Earth for some money or whatever. Um, and the Tula got out. Or there was a Tula left inside or something like that. And it's, it's attached itself to... Um, Jamie, the f- the the boy who was a part of the crash, um, and it is spreading itself like a, it's maybe maybe the Tula is like microscopic, and Jamie inhaled it, and now he can spread that on. Maybe this is like Tula weaponry because they said it was weapon. It was a weapon, and like the Tula, like he said it was a weapon cargo or something like that. Oh, a warship. Yeah. But then he said it was an ambulance. He's lying. He's a con man. Oh, yeah. Um, and maybe this is like weaponization. Like he, they're me- this is how the Tulas make an army. Mm hmm. And maybe they're becoming an army. But I don't, I think Jamie's fighting it because he's original. And he, that's where the mummy bit is coming from. Maybe Nancy is his mum. Maybe not. No, Nancy's sister. Mm. It'll um, be interesting. Yeah. But those are some of my theories. Okay, interesting theories. We yeah. shall see in the course of time. If I hit the nail on the head, you know how insufferable I'm going to be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you want to bring up about this episode? Um, it was paced weirdly. Is it? I think it's another one because like, it's a two-parter. It's, yeah, it's like... A lot of setup. For me, it's like action... Really long yeah. pause, action-y pause. But you know the Slitheen one? Yeah. The first episode of that was, was very slow and all set up, you said. Yeah. Do you feel this did a better job of being the first part of a two-parter? It is a better, it's, it's doing a better job. Yeah. It is still a bit, like, slow. I do think that we have left on more of a, a cliffhanger like last time. And this time, we we are no closer to knowing what is... About what is attacking these people. Is that good or bad? It's, it can work both ways. As long as it comes to light very early in the next episode, I think it'd be fine. If it comes to light quite late in that episode, it's going to be like, oh, we waited all this. If it's not good enough, it's going to be like we waited all this time for the squiggly alien to come out of the belly of the boy. (laughs) Like something, something similar, like, that this that, that his his body is a host to an alien. Mm, mm. Um, do I think they're all dead? No. Do I think it's reversible? Yes. Why? Do I do I think it's mimicking Jamie's? Oh my god! It's mimicking Jamie's injuries. Why don't you think they're all dead? Because they are mimicking. Right. They don't have the injury. What do you mean? They don't have the injury. They are mimicking their injury is being like pushed into them by Jamie. They're being like casted out through his mind. Okay. Oh my God. They're all a representation of Jamie. But why? Because he, he, he is, something's happened to him from that ship and his mask is fused to his body. He's got the cut on his hand. He's got, he's, he died with his mask on it, so he can never take it off. That's why it's fused Yeah. to him. Um, he had a blunt force trauma to his head, claps in the chest. Mm-hmm. Jamie's dead, but something is controlling him. Right. Well, and as he, as he touches people, he makes them, he makes, they make replicas of him. But the <laughs> replicas aren't being, they're not totally like him they just take on attributes of him so his injuries are being 
or they are being placed onto all these other victims because they are mimicking him. I have one thing to say in response to that. And it's a River Song quote, so listeners will appreciate it. You're good. I'm not saying you're right, but you're very good. Okay. We'll wait and see. Mm. Episode 10, coming up soon. Well, yeah, we're going to watch it tomorrow. Tomorrow Friday. Probably, yeah. So I feel like I feel like this ranks quite highly for you yes. so in all the episodes you've um, seen so far. We're missing a few segments. Oh, did you want to do... What the fuck fashion? Go ahead. Okay, so my two fashion awards go to best dress and worst dress. Okay, let's have best dress first. Best dress is the lady singing at the beginning. Oh, okay, you liked that. Yeah, I thought she was... Ob- it had to be you. Yeah, it felt really glitzy, glammy. It felt of the time. Yeah. It felt... Yeah, I really liked it. It felt like show girly. I really liked it. I thought mm-hmm. she looked amazing. Yeah. Um, How much I hate to say it, Jack nearly got it. Because he oh, looked yeah. really, like, smart. With, especially at the end when he had his coat on. He and looked everything. the part. Yeah. He looked, he fitted in. Yeah. That's what I think the Doctor should do. He should, he should fit blend in. in, yeah. He should blend in. And the worst dressed. Can anybody guess who I'm going to give this fucking award to? Is it Rose in her Union Jack? Yes! <laughs> Rose, what are you thinking? <laughs> She's taken out for a spin, babes. I what? was just like... When he was looking at her ass, Oh, God. I yeah. was like, you misogynistic fucking yes. prick. Yes. The thing is, though, Jack is like that with everyone. If it was Jack a man... Jack Prickness. Huh? Jack Prickness. Prickness. Is that what we're going to call him? <laughs> Captain Jack Prickness. Yeah, he's such a um, fucking prick. Yes, he is. But I think if it was a man dangling from the balloon, he'd have done the same thing. If it was what? A man, he would have done the same thing. Ugh. He's just basically, he fancies everything on everything with a pulse. Because there was Ugh. that guy Archie who was like he was a bit jealous because I oh, think he, he, his bum. he and Jack had obviously had a bit of a thing, oh. um, and then he was jealous because he was eyeing up the girl on the barrage balloon. Oh. The thing is, though, I was a bit like, how is he going to save her? Yeah, but Rose. he's from the far. He's from the fifty-first century, I think. And that's the other thing. Like, what do you think the time agency is? The time agency is there to because we because multiple creep multiple species can can move through time yeah they're there to stop them corrupting the order of time yeah so they're like a regulatory yeah like they regulate so like, it let's say like there's an alien species that need, want is going to go back to make sure that i don't know juliet and romeo and juliet was never written <laughs> yeah okay. out, out of just like yeah thin air yeah right, out of thin air there um but the time people the time agency know that juliet and romeo and juliet need to be written to inspire Another, West Side Story, <laughs> yeah, to inspire something else because it's an it's a it's a chain it's a it's a it's a catalyst for it's yeah a, yeah yeah for everything they can see what important events yeah there, yeah and yeah. so okay. like they protect those important events okay yeah from they make sure that they happen because we because because corrupting time time has for me as my understanding has, is a straight line. It's like it goes from it's you follow this line and like when you when you veer off that time, that's when those creatures come. The Reapers. That's when yeah. the creatures. That's when you start to shatter well, time. I don't know. I don't know if that's quite accurate. Cause... Actually, can I change my opinion? Yeah. It? It's like a squiggly line. Yes. It's like a squiggly, squiggly line. Yes. And it's when you start to to move squiggles and the squiggles don't match up. That's when time paradox yes. happens. Yes. So you, ca- I think you can, you can move the squiggles. Time can be rewritten, but you have to be careful with it. Yeah. Um, you've come so close there to almost quoting the Doctor in a future episode. Oh. <laughs> There's a famous line. Don't tell me. If you're listening, if you know, you know. Okay. Where are we going to see the tree babies? Tree babies? Yeah. What, like from Jabe? Yeah. We won't. Oh. When are we going to see the ball babies? <laughs> From the that face of Bo. The head of ball. The face of Bo. The hell? Face in the tub. The number, th- <laughs> the number of names you've called the face of Bo. Well, I forget. It was the face of Bob the other week. I forget. And uh, the jar head. And now the face in the tub. I've got too much to remember. I can't remember all these names. Yeah. Okay. Well, you will. When you're I'm just about. When you're a fully with... converted Doctor Who fan, it'll just about cope. be second nature. I could just about cope with Rose. Okay. And Doctor. You love Rose. 
I do love Rose. Did you feel like her character was a bit different in this episode? Yeah. That's the, that's the writing. It felt a little bit like she was a caricature. Caricature? Of her previous... We have got to a point, like, especially in Father's Day. Yeah. She was emotional, raw. This was really a raw emotion that we saw from her. And it was like, really, we saw a lot of character development. And I feel like it was just, like, some of it was just like, we haven't looked back on that episode. We she was a bit two-dimensional in this episode. Yeah, like, we need to, I think, I think at the beginning of this episode, there should have been, like, maybe a conversation, like, between the Doctor and her, like, saying, like, yeah. you okay? You've to be fair, been, though. Like, really um, tough. The episodes don't always follow straight on from each other, so there could be they could have gone on multiple adventures in between those two episodes that we didn't see. Do you know what I mean? So that means there's potential to bring back the Bay of the Universe. Yeah. And the companion I tolerate because she looks <laughs> off my bay. Um Yeah, there is potential for missing to stories. Bring them back. Missing stories, yeah. And go uh, back on an adventure. Yeah. We're gonna get back on it. Yeah. We're going to get back on the wagon. We're going to drive this ship. We're going to learn how to drive this ship. I'm going to pass my test to drive this ship. I'm going to get, I'm going to have five, I'm going to have five of the doctor's children so that we can train them up to drive the ship. And then there'll be a rose bush. Yeah. All roses. God hopes that, um, Ben never becomes the showrunner of Doctor Who. Absolutely, I would be amazing to be a showrunner. No, nope. <laughs> I would absolutely have a really good arc. For I show. wouldn't. I wouldn't wish that job on anyone because um, the amount of abuse you'd get from even just whatever you do, you're going to have factions of fandom just telling My you. My vision would be to have the Doctor have a revelation. He goes on the venture mm. and he has a revelation that he actually can save his people. All right. That would be the end. Like, he sees something that is so connected to his people that he's like, that can save them. There is a way. There Mm. is a way to save them. But he has one chance. Mm. And he has to line up time so carefully. Yeah. And he brings back all his companions. Okay. Each companion must do a thing to help him. I like that idea. I like the idea of companions, like, coming back. So, like, there's an episode with Rose, and he, he or she must... They must go on an adventure to lock this thing in time. Yeah. And she has to sacrifice herself. That could be your arc there. for your whole season. Yeah. yeah. And then you bring back Catherine Tate and she has to do something. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then you anchor back from all these episodes that they've been in. And it this is this is how you should end the show, Russell. <laughs> if you're ever going to get to the end, this is how you get Him saving his people is the one thing that he needs to do. mm it is would be full circle for him. Yeah. Or find Susan. <laughs> God bloody Susan. And hope that she's got less annoying <laughs> with her yappy voice. <laughs> well, she might have regenerated. Oh my God. Oh my God. She might be a he by now. <laughs> oh my God. What's so exciting about that? Susan potential. Yeah, you, Take could, Susan. you could cast anyone as Susan. Susan. Oh my God. Wouldn't it be amazing that like it's... Like, Yasmin is Susan. Y- who's Yasmin? Oh, from Heartstopper. Oh, it's Yasmin Finney. Yeah. Is that her name? Yeah. She's Susan. Oh my God, spin-off show. Russell, you need to write a spin-off show. We, literally... we, we know who she's playing and uh, it's not Susan, but it is... It I is don't need to know. ...somewhat um, significant. Um, yeah. There needs to be a spin-off show. Yes. There needs to be a spin-off show where... Called Susan Who. <laughs> Susan <laughs> is trying to find the doctor. Yeah. Because she's felt her people die. Yeah. Like she's tried to, she's, yeah. tr- she's gone back to wherever they come from, the yeah. planet who or whatever it is. <laughs> planet who. <laughs> um, whatever, whatever the planet is or like somewhere in the depth of the universe. And she, and she's like, maybe they keep crossing each other. Yeah. And then she's like, like, he messes up some time and he's like, oh, I've got to fix this yeah. now. You have a knack of coming up with ideas that kind of get used in, in different ways to what you're saying, but you, the ideas are, are there. Oh. Vote Ben for showrunner for 2024. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, going into the Ben era. Um, shall we rate The Empty Child? We can rate the empty child. So I'll bring up the spreadsheet so you can compare it to previous episodes. Okay, I already know what I'm going to give it. The highest score you've given anything so far is Dalek, which was three point five. What are you giving okay. the empty child? So Dalek is moving up. All right. 
to a four. Uh, yeah, you want to amend Dalek to a four? I want to amend Dalek to a four because I really did. I really did like Dalek, but because I, I need room to fit this in at three point five. Okay, so I don't think it's good as Dalek, but, but it's very good. It, I think it is like. I think it is good, and I think it des- it's not a middling for me. I think it deserves a 3.5. And so by doing this, this is, this is an organic process, listeners. Mm-hmm. So we're, yeah. we're treating it as like, so if, so I'm roughly like giving these stars, giving things stars when you're like trying to rank them is hard. Mm. Um, and we have been thinking about... Yeah, a little peep behind the curtain. We've had, we have talked about maybe revising the way we rank things. Um, so watch out. But watch we'll, we'll save that for series two, I think. So yeah, I think it's three point five for me, Stephen. Cool. Okay, that's a that's a decent score. Yeah, it's a decent score. It was better than it was better than middling, and I thought it was, but it's not good enough for me. I think it's still weak as an episode because it's of the structuring issues mm. for me. Like it's it's slow. It's a start. Like you start get going, and they drop you back off. Oh, okay. Yeah. And like, there's not many keys have been given to us. Yeah. Like we've got we've got all these questions and now they have to answer them all in part two. Yeah. That's not how a two parter should. I think we should be drip mm. fed and, and what answers have we gotten? Well, no, n- none really. But the thing I think that's I think that's quite standard. I think yeah. Part, maybe you could say part one is about asking questions. Part two is about ask, well asking more questions and then getting all the answers. Yeah, but with the Slavine, we found out who the Slavine were quite well, early on. Yeah, but not who they were, but we revealed them yes yes like it feels like they're trying to save budget because they've spent so much on those fucking planes but anywho anyway i've got to rate this episode as well yeah um i tell you what when i first watched this it was it it became quite a famous episode Mm. for people because it was the one that everybody remembered um and was like oh that was a scary episode it was known as the scary one oh okay Oh, um, tonally, I can understand that. Yeah. Now, I agreed. As this was probably the first episode of Doctor Who that actually scared me. Oh. Um, like, because I remember watching it with my friend. His parents were out for the evening, so it was just us um, watching this this scary episode of Doctor Who, and it was getting dark. And I, oh God, I was pathetic. I was like, <laughs> when it finished, I was like, can you put the outside light on? Because I was scared of gas mask people. <laughs> oh my God, Stephen. I was 13. That was too old, really, to be scared about that sort of thing. It doesn't look real. It looks like a fake Halloween mask that they've just glued to their faces. Yeah, but it's the concept and it's the the way it takes you as a child, as a, you know, a young person. I don't know. Maybe I'm just revealing myself to be really pathetic. Anyway, um, what I'm saying is I th- I thought it was a good episode back then and I still think it's, I still enjoy it. Um, but I think it's gone down in my estimations in recent years. Okay. Um, I would probably give it a three. Which is slightly above middle. I give it a three. Have you ever thought about like this? The, the showrunners or the visual effects people was like, how can we u- not use CGI and how can we like make them scary but like not? They're like, ah, my dad's got a load of gas masks in the back of his van. <laughs> Should we just super glue those to their faces and like make them look good? I don't think they super glued them to their faces. But no, I appreciate what you're saying, and I think there's it was there's, a creative way. There's a truth in that. It's like this. It's like the same reason why the TARDIS looks like a police box because it was easy to yeah. get a prop that looked like a police box. Yeah. Um, oh, but the, I do agree with you that one thing. There's something scary with like not scary, but like unsettling because we know of the horrors of World War Two. Yes, gas masks are unsettling. They are unsettling, and also the fact that. They look a bit human because they've got two eyes and a sort of mouth. Yeah. But they're not, they've got no, they're quite anonymous. Yeah. Um, it's that uncanny valley yeah. thing of like, it's, it looks human enough, but not, not quite human enough. Yeah. Um, Good episode. I've enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah. Well, I, I can't wait to hear what you think of the next part. The title of the next one is probably the strangest title in this whole season. Okay. It's called The Doctor Dances. Oh. <laughs> fuck's sake <laughs> if i wanted to watch strictly come dancing <laughs> i would have watched it but i don't want to watch strictly come dancing yeah oh my god christopher eccleston do not do strictly come dancing da, 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 da. no da, 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 no da, offense da. to anyone who likes strictly come dancing it's just not my jam no fair enough so shall we wrap up there 
Okay. Because our, our dinner's cooking and it's nearly nearly done. Yeah, we so. don't normally do this at this time. No. I've got, I'm working seven days in a row, so we yeah. have to squeeze Actually, it this is the first episode and recording that we've done with it being dark outside. Yeah. And I think that's perfect for this episode. Yeah. So yeah, that was it, good. Well, it fit, it but yeah. fitted, yeah. Okay. So I um, hope you enjoyed. Um, don't forget, find us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. You can email us at abouttimecast at gmail.com. Um, and until next time, au revoir. Au revoir. Chim chim au revoir. Au revoir, mummy. Mummy, mummy, mummy. You have to go extra, don't you?